I discovered that my husband of several decades had been having an affair. The other woman was just twenty years old, much younger than me. When I confronted my husband, he coldly said, Divorce me for her. You can have custody of the kids. My world shattered, leaving me speechless. To make matters worse, he had gotten his mistress pregnant. I told our daughters about the situation. Embracing their suggestion, I decided to take drastic measures. Just you wait, I'll get you back soon. I vowed silently. My name is Natalie Johnson, 47 years old. I married John, who was the same age, when I was 25. In the blink of an eye, 20 years had passed. We have three daughters, the oldest in college, the second and third in high school. They're not fully independent yet, but they're at an age when they can manage things on their own. Now that the children were more independent, I was able to immerse myself in the work I love. I've been working for a major corporation since before I got married, and I earn more than my husband. Additionally, the house we live in was inherited from my parents, so we have no mortgage payments and live comfortably. With the kids growing up, we had more time as a couple. One night, while we were sharing the beer, my husband grinned and said, Hey, Natalie, the kids don't need us as much anymore. How about we take a trip? Just the two of us, like old times. Oh, really? When was the last time we went on a trip together? You're always helping out around here, and we both work hard, don't we? A little indulgence won't hurt. Haha, <laughs> that's true. The girls are old enough to handle things on their own. Should we leave the housework to them? Yeah, that's a great idea. I'll need to arrange some time off work. Where would you like to go? It might be nice to relax at a hot spring resort. A hot spring resort sounds great. He began planning the trip with a delighted expression, and I couldn't help but smile at his boyish enthusiasm. Whenever I had a free moment during work or my commute, I found myself checking out travel websites. We gradually narrowed down our destination, and I'd already filled in our daughters about our plans. I was thrilled that he suggested the trip. Fast forward one month after our vacation discussions. I was waiting for my husband to get home so we could finalize our travel schedule. Usually, he's home by the time I return from work, but that day was different. When I got home, he was nowhere to be found, and our daughters couldn't provide any clues. His late returns were always preceded by a call, so his absence made me uneasy. If he didn't come by the next day, I decided I would call him. As I was considering my options, he finally arrived home just after 11 p.m. Welcome home. I was worried since you were late, I said, rushing over to him, but his face was somber. What happened? Is everything okay at work? I asked, concern growing. He opened his mouth slowly. Natalie, we need to talk. Talk? About what? You look so serious. I have been having an affair. What? I said, I've been cheating on you with another woman. I was too shocked to speak properly. Cheating? My husband? In my confusion, I managed to stammer out a response. What are you saying? An affair? You wouldn't. But I have. It's been going on for a year. A year? That's a joke, right? You showed no signs. I tried my best to keep it from you. Meeting her after work when you were working late, telling you I was working on weekends when I went out. No, that's a lie. You wouldn't. My husband grabbed both my shoulders, looking straight into my eyes. I'm really sorry, but there's no turning back now. What do you mean, no turning back? Stop kidding around. We've been together for 20 years, haven't we? Anyway, that's the situation. I want a divorce for her. A divorce for her? What the heck is going on? We were just talking about going on a trip together, weren't we? I'm really sorry. I couldn't comprehend what he was saying. Has my husband been replaced by someone else? Tearfully, I confronted him and he began to explain the situation. According to his story, the woman he was cheating with was a junior at the same company, barely 20 years old and a temporary employee. She had started working there about a year ago, and he became her mentor. Their professional relationship evolved into after-work tutoring sessions and coffee breaks together. Eventually, they started going out for dinners and a romantic relationship developed. She's so innocent, cute, and she depends on me. You must be joking, and she's 27 years younger. He spoke of her charm, leaving me feeling inadequate. Then he dropped a bombshell. Remember I mentioned wanting a divorce for her sake? Truth is, she's pregnant. What? Pregnant. Yeah, so I think I should take responsibility and marry her. Thankfully, our girls are becoming more independent. Hold on a minute. That doesn't matter, right? Those girls are our daughters, you know. 
Don't worry, I'll give you custody. What? As we're having this crucial conversation, my husband's eyes gleam with a calm smile. Does he really think that offering custody will make everything okay? I felt like he was mocking me, and the sadness I'd been feeling began to morph into anger. Before I knew it, I was shouting louder than I ever had before. Don't be ridiculous. This is… this is too much. There's no point in saying that, right? The life that's about to be born means everything to me now. Then why did you suggest we go on a trip as a couple? I was really looking forward to that. I didn't know she was pregnant at the time. So if she hadn't gotten pregnant, you would have continued cheating on me in secret. Is that it? Well, anyway, I'm bringing her over tomorrow. Let's discuss everything then. He quickly changed the subject, handing me already filled out divorce papers before rushing to the bathroom. What on earth is happening? He drops the bombshell of an affair out of nowhere, then mentions she's pregnant. How much more can he humiliate me? I had prepared dinner for him, waited anxiously, and now I felt utterly foolish. Chaotic emotions swirled within me, but no matter how furious I became, the situation remained unchanged. I decided to confront my husband's affair head-on. The next day, as he had promised, he brought his mistress over. I instructed our daughters to stay in their rooms and had my husband and his mistress, who introduced herself as Lisa, sit on the couch. I am truly sorry for all of this, Lisa said, bowing her head as she sat down. Your apology doesn't change anything. My husband and I have three daughters, I replied firmly. I understand that, but for the sake of our child and my womb, could you please divorce John? Lisa requested calmly. What? Why should I destroy my family for your child's sake? I couldn't believe her audacity. Anger surged through me, and I raised my voice. This is absurd. Lisa looked shocked, covering her mouth with her hand. My husband turned to her with concern. Hey, Lisa, are you okay? I'm sorry, John. I'm feeling a bit. Uh, must be morning sickness, Lisa said, her voice wavering. Right. What do you need? Should I show you to the bathroom? John asked, concern in his voice. Thank you. Could you show me the way? Of course, come this way, John replied, displaying a level of gentlemanliness I hadn't seen in him before. He helped Lisa to the bathroom, looking uncertain. When she returned, John said gently, Lisa, take it easy, okay? Our precious little baby is inside you. Yeah, sorry. Natalie's outburst caught me off guard, Lisa responded. I'm sorry too. If she had agreed to divorce right away, we wouldn't be in this mess. No, it's okay. This is a challenge we have to face together, Lisa said with a smile, and they held hands, creating a scene reminiscent of a movie. In that moment, my feelings toward my husband hardened abruptly. If only you had agreed to an honest divorce. What? You think this is my fault? You're the one who cheated on me in the first place. If that's how it is, I'll agree to the divorce or whatever, I said, deciding to end the feudal discussion. Shortly after, I escorted my husband and his unfaithful partner out of the house and locked the door behind them. My daughters emerged from their rooms, clearly having overheard our conversation. Mom, is what we heard true? My eldest daughter asked, her voice filled with concern. I nodded silently, unable to conceal the truth any longer. I called them into the living room to discuss their father's affair. So, we're getting a divorce. I want each of you to decide who you want to live with from now on. In unison, my daughters responded, Well, obviously we're staying with mom, right? But it's not fair if dad doesn't face any consequences. Exactly. Let's teach him and his new friend a lesson. Immediately, my daughters proposed a plan. They're quite clever. Their suggestion surprised me, but I agreed and decided to play along. A few days later, I called my husband and told him I needed to discuss alimony. When he came over, I got straight to the point. I'll be seeking a fair alimony arrangement after the divorce. As for custody, you can have it. As I spoke, my husband rolled his eyes. Ha! Huh? Then our daughters appeared. His expression shifted to one of dismay as he saw them. Hey, wouldn't you rather stay with your mom? He asked tentatively. Ha! Huh? Why? We're obviously staying with you, Dad. They replied in unison. Who we choose is our business, and Dad has a more stable income, right? Wait, wait, Natalie. I mean, your mom earns more in this household. Their father interjected desperately. It's fine, Dad. As long as we get our usual allowance, we're good, right? As long as us three stick together, the daughters reassured him, brushing off his attempts to persuade them. Exactly. Actually, Dad, you should feel honored we're choosing you. Well, I? He seemed bewildered. 
but he had no choice but to accept his children's decision. He had always been a soft touch when it came to his daughters. My husband reluctantly agreed to take custody of the children. Since he was the reason for the divorce, I wouldn't be paying any child support. We settled on divorce proceedings that focus on receiving alimony from him and his mistress. The next day, we filed our divorce papers at City Hall. The alimony amounted to $30,000 from my husband and $15,000 from his mistress, paid in full at once. Our daughters stayed with me on weekends and lived with their father and his mistress during the week in a small apartment where she had previously resided. It was cramped living for five people, but that discomfort was part of the plan. Just wait and see. I was determined to ensure they regretted betraying me and our daughters. Two months later, just when I thought the time might be right, my ex-husband and Lisa barged into my house. What's wrong with them? Dealing with those spoiled brats is impossible. I lost my temper as they stood there, faces red and breathing heavily, complaining in unison. I responded calmly, please don't be rude. All three of them are my pride and joy. They're good kids. Don't give me that. What makes them good kids? All they do is complain about wanting expensive meals or not getting enough allowance every single day. Exactly. And why are we responsible for their tuition and textbooks? No one told us about that. Well, isn't that expected? After all, you two were their parents. Our home is too small. A family of five in a one-bedroom apartment is unheard of. Yes, that apartment was originally rented for just me. The neighbors on both sides keep complaining and even the landlord is insisting that we move out. Well, that's your own doing. And if the girls want dad to have custody, there's nothing you can do about it. Both of them fell silent, their expressions bitter. After a long pause, John lowered his head and spoke softly. Please take them. Ha! Huh. What did you say? I said take them. We're expecting a baby. If we keep giving in to the girls' demands, we won't be able to properly raise our child. Ha! Huh? Raising them is also part of being a parent, you know. Stop complaining. When did you become so heartless? You don't understand how others feel. You're the worst. His face flushed with anger as he shouted. I sighed heavily and responded sharply. Don't understand others' feelings. You're calling me the worst? Are you talking about yourself? Who cheated, had a child with another woman, and asked me to divorce you for her? Who betrayed me first and did the worst thing? Do you remember that? That's all in the past. Don't bring it up again, he retorted, seemingly unaware of his own selfishness. Now, he was blaming me along with his mistress. I didn't hold back. Enough is enough. It's in the past. Don't try to neatly close the book on your own. Do you have any idea how the girls and I felt? We were devastated when you betrayed us. Despite that, you continue to be selfish. But, but I already apologized for the affair, didn't I? Please just take them in, John pleaded. Fine, I will. I pity the girls for having to stay with someone like you. But in exchange, you must pay child support. Understood. You have a responsibility as their father till they grow up and become independent adults. But on my salary alone, I can't possibly. Enough. Don't play the victim now. You should have thought about that before you got your mistress pregnant. Now leave and never show your face to me again. His face went pale and he slumped where he stood. After hanging his head for a moment, he whispered to Lisa. Let's go home. At that moment, Lisa, who had been silent until then, slapped his cheek hard. Don't mess with me. I ended up in debt even after paying alimony and now you're talking about child support. This is ridiculous. What are you saying? What's going on, Lisa? What do you mean by lie? Weren't we planning to raise our child together? There is no child. Time froze as his mistress dropped the bombshell. He started questioning her in disbelief. No. No child? Was the pregnancy a lie? I thought you were wealthy, so I wanted to marry you. What? What are you saying, Lisa? Is that true? The house you boasted about belonged to your wife all along, didn't it? I can't get a house, I'm paying alimony, and now I'm forced to take care of those stupid girls. I've had enough. There's nothing good about being married to you. Divorce me immediately. I? I can't believe this. My ex-husband clung to Lisa, tears in his eyes. Get out of my way. Move. I'm leaving. She pushed him aside and stormed out of the house. My ex-husband, abandoned by his mistress, immediately fell to his knees and begged me. Please forgive me. Give me another chance. No matter how many times he begged, I firmly turned him away. I promptly drove him out of the house and called our daughters back. 
From that moment, I officially regained custody of our daughters and demanded child support for my ex-husband. Supporting three children must have been a heavy burden for him, having depleted his savings with Alame payments. Moreover, their workplace witnessed the confrontation between him and Lisa, spreading the news about their relationship rapidly. Lisa's contract was terminated, and my ex-husband was demoted to a less significant department. His salary was reduced and facing an even tougher financial situation, he seemed to struggle to make ends meet each month. Reportedly, he can't even afford proper meals now and appears to have become quite bitter. When I shared the story with our daughters, they high-fived each other with wide smiles. Their plan had worked brilliantly, and the four of us celebrated together. From this point forward, our life as a family of four women began. Despite the absence of their father, I am committed to taking full responsibility as a parent and raising my daughters to become outstanding adults.